Welcome back to Problem Aspen. I'm Jim Sherwood. And my next guest joining us here today is going to demonstrate another technique known as Koshinagi or hip throw. Let's bring him in. Ryan is a multiple time Louisiana state champion and also a regional and national champion. And he's a brown belt in judo and purple belt in Japanese jiu jitsu. And today's technique, we're going to be covering a sporting and a, a self-defense application. So, what are we getting into today? So, what we're going to be uh, demonstrating today is called koshinage, meaning hip throw, or as it's known in judo, goshi, meaning large loin. All right, so the first part of the technique, we're going to cover it from a sport application. Let's get started. Right. So, starting out, we're going to get what's called kumikata, is a standard judo grip. I'm right-handed, so I'm going to get a right-handed grip, meaning my right hand is going to be up with my thumb inside of the lapel. My left hand, my thumb is going to be on the outside. My fingers are going to come wrapped under either his elbow or his armpit. Here. So to start this technique, whenever I pull, I want my arm, my hand on his arm. I want my pinky to come up, and I'm going to pull back like I'm doing a bow and arrow motion. My right hand on the lapel is going to pull him up into my chest, and my goal is to get his head over his toes to break his balance. I'm going to step my right foot in towards his opposite foot and pull him up. As I'm here, my arm on the top by the lapel is going to wrap around to his waist. So as I pull, I'm going to reach around and grab his belt or wrap my hand around his waist. As I do that, I'm going to what we do is called a pivot. My back foot is going to step back in, and my feet are going to make an L shape. And I'm going to bend my knees so I can squat. If they're facing forward or if they're spread out too wide, I'm going to be off balance. I want my feet to be placed in between his feet, and I want to bend my knees and keep my balance over my hips. I don't want to lean forward or backwards. When I step in and I pull, I grab around the waist, and I pivot, and I stick my hip all the way out on the opposite side of his. I from too in far, if I'm too far in, he's just gonna roll over the side. If I'm too far out, I'm gonna lose my balance. So I want my hip just sticking out the opposite side of his hip. So what I'm gonna do with this arm is I like to tell people it's like putting a seatbelt on. It's gonna come from up here, and I'm gonna bring it down to my opposite hip. It's like I would put a seatbelt on. So when I pull, I come in, I'm gonna bring this around, and I'm going to continue to turn my body and my head back out to the left. The grip is one of the most important aspects of judo, so just to reemphasize, kumikata, the standard grip, if I'm right-handed, my right hand is gonna go up to the top, if I'm left-handed, my left hand would. So right-handed, Thumb inside the lapel, up top by his shoulder, or I can grab behind his head, whichever I'm more comfortable with. The other arm, the other arm, I'm going to grab thumb outside, fingers in, either under the armpit, or under the elbow. All right, so before we get into the throw, it's always really important to warm up. One of the warm ups we do in judo and jiu jitsu is what's called an uchikomi, it's a practice repetition for a throw. And these are very important because they help walk you through and drill you through the footwork and the different pulls for different kinds of techniques. So for this technique that we're doing today, I'm going to get my standard grip that we just saw. And I'm not going to throw them every time because they won't be able to take that many falls. We usually do about 30 a piece. So I'm going to step in, get my pull, come back out. Two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, four, twenty-five, six, seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. You always want to try to get at least thirty repetitions in for every class or every time you're getting ready to do a throw. And right, so, just to reemphasize, we're going over the sporting aspect of the throw. So once again, I'm going to come in with my grip, right hand up in the lapel, my thumb is in. The left hand, I'm coming thumb out, fingers in, either under the armpit or under the elbow. 
I started this throw. When I pull the hand that I have on the arm, my pinky is gonna turn up to the ceiling. I'm gonna pull back across my face, almost like a bow and arrow motion. So, my right arm, I'm gonna pull him up into my chest as I step my foot, my right foot, to his right foot. So like this. That brings his head over his toes, which breaks his balance, which makes it easier for me to throw him. I need my hips or my belt under his belt. I need to get below his center of gravity or it won't work. So when I step in and pull, and I break his balance, my right arm on the top is going to slip around behind and either grab the belt or grab the waist. My left foot is going to pivot back in, and I want my feet between his. If my feet are out here, I won't be able to do it. And if my legs are straight and I bend my back, I won't be able to do it. I want to keep my back as straight as possible while bending my knees and pulling through. So as I pull, here, I get my hip all the way out, and I pull him all the way through, and I continue to look my head back up into the left. And this is what the throw looks like more at full speed. Now let's take a look at the technique from a self-defense application. All right, so from a jiu-jitsu or self-defense perspective, the movement is going to be slightly different with this because there's nothing to grab onto. I can't pull him or break his balance like I did with the sport aspect. So on the street, if Joe comes to punch me in the head and I'm standing on this line, if I don't move out the way, he's going to knock me out. So when he punches, I want to move out the way and protect my head. Be here. And so Joe's momentum now is coming forward, and I want to use that to break his balance. So from here off the block, we usually perform some kind of strike to get his head coming forward. So when I step in and hit him, and it makes his head come forward, that's that head over the toes we were talking about earlier, that breaks his balance. Now from here, I don't want to just step into Joe like this, because he's going to take me down bring me to the ground, and you never want to be on the ground when you're fighting, if somebody's fighting you, especially out in the street or in public somewhere. So from here, when Joe goes to punch me, I move off, and I strike. I'm taking my hand that's protecting my head, and I'm gonna wrap it around his tricep on that punching arm, and I'm gonna use that while I perform that same pivot we did earlier. So when I come here and I strike and I get his head forward, I'm going to keep pulling him and keep this momentum coming in more of a circular motion. So you can see, he punches, I'm gonna step off and strike. And as I pull this, I move more in a circle as I reach behind to get around his waist. And then I'm gonna come through with that same squat, the same pull and look through. time when he punches I always want to make sure to protect my head I never want to try and catch a punch and I never want to try and swat at it because there's always a second hand coming so when he punches I want to be both hands protecting my head and when I'm here I'm going to trap and strike to get his head coming forward and when he punches his momentum's coming forward I don't want to stop that by moving into him I want to keep this motion coming forward with that pivot I'm either going to come with an underhook or come across his back. Same squat, feet are inside, hips out. I bring this elbow to my hip and I keep looking through. And with a squat, when I come in, I don't want to just bend over. When I straighten my legs, my head is going to go down and look out. And that motion is what lifts him up off the ground and allows me to throw him over. All right, so here's what the throw looks like closer to full speed. All right, that's a wrap. Thank you all for tuning in again. Thank you, Ryan. And a shout out to Zanchin Dojo and Sensei Darren Roomba.
like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more upcoming videos. And I will put links, social media links, and any other affiliated links in the description below. See y'all on the next one.